Geeks, the ungodly geeks, and we're doing things. Hooray! Hey, we're here again, guys. I'm Luke. I'm Joe. Uh, and we are here to talk about stuff. Yes. Um, we would have all of our topics pulled up right away, but Luke's phone decided to take a shit on us. I, a Pokemon Go apparently just uh, it just completely my phone. it completely killed his phone while it's, we were doing our uh, we recorded a little vlog for our patrons that uh, we'll release soonish. And uh, it just decided to... His phone just completely took a shit. It ugh, went black screen and has not come back, so fuck. Fuck me, right? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much how it is. Um, so, you know, RIP, you know, put an F in the chat. Yep. Uh, F in the comments, uh, whatever. Hopefully it's not a permanently unfixable problem, or maybe one uh, OnePlus will I mean, give me a new phone or yeah, something. It should still be within warranty. I, I can't really comment on that. I never had to have... Like, my OnePlus 3T is fine. Mm. My OnePlus 1 was fine. I sent that off to a friend of mine so she could have a new phone because she needed a new phone. Mm. Um, so I, I've sat there and I've thought about that and we were talking about that in the, in the Patreon. I've, I've either given away or sold like seven, eight, nine phones yeah. over the last couple of years because I just buy a phone that I don't fucking need and I use it for five months and then replace it again and I think I have a problem. If you even use it five months and replace it, sometimes it's like four. Yeah, three, no, you're two. absolutely correct. Um, I, I do do that sometimes. Hey, there's and, a new uh, thing I kind of need, I kind of want. I'm, I mean, I'm okay, I, I was at least, I, in my mind, um, every time I've bought a new phone, I've had some weak justification. Yeah. Um, oh, it's shiny. Well, With the uh, Razer a phone, bit faster than the one I have. <laughs> um, the Razer phone, I do, I did have legitimate complaints. I was having legitimate issues with my Pixel Two. Yeah. The only good thing about the Pixel Two, in my experience, is the camera. The camera is amazing. Um, but with a special port of the Google Pixel's camera app to mm -hmm. my phone, my phone's about eighty percent as good, so, picture wise. So I don't, I don't care about it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I was having a lot of crashes and stutters and slowdowns and. Stuff like that. So I, I I actually did have a legitimate like I couldn't keep using the phone. Mm. So Yeah, so. my And the Nexus six P. Yeah. You had a lot of battery issues with that one. It. it wasn't terrible with yeah. that one. I think it was uh but yeah, I dropped it and broke the screen, so I bought yours. Right. And then I had the uh I don't remember what you replaced it with. I can't remember for the life of me what you replaced it with. Well, I don't know. Anyway. I don't remember. I think I replaced it with the uh, Asus. That makes me, yeah, that's very possible. I think I bought the Asus and then I got this Oh, one. no. Did I sell you the 6P? Oh, you did. Because the Asus shit on you because its proximity sensor decided to stop functioning. I, it was, I, I got your 6 I don't remember how. Whatever. I, I know. They, they, were, they were both in there. I don't know. And like then I, I said, got I, this I, one. I, I buy too many phones. So um, the OnePlus. Um, I actually just sold my buddy Jake the Essential phone that I had. Yeah. And I loved that phone. I really didn't want to give it up. But Jake needed a better phone. This I absolutely adored this phone. Um, I'm kind of I mean, sad whatever's going wrong with it now. Because this is, uh, of, of all the phones I've had, the before, like I really, really liked the Nexus. They even Even though it had a shit battery. Yeah. The first Nexus, the Nexus 5, I had, I absolutely adored. Yeah. I actually wanted a Nexus 5. I, I, it was just one of those things I wanted. Yeah. I never bought one. Actually, it came that was the red. first phone I got. I, I got that from um, Swappa. Yeah. It was like the first nice phone I bought. Yeah. Not new, but yeah, I had that one. I had a Huawei. 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 And, and then I had the Asus phone, and I had the fucking Nexus 6P. And All right, so I'm going to – we're, we're going to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to dive straight into news of the stupid. Okay. Because I do have – Got a little um, bit. A little bit. Uh, so Lori Lawlin, we all heard about how she uh, paid $500,000. Aunt, uh, Aunt Becky. Yeah, Aunt Becky mm -hmm. paid five. <laughs> Becky. Her name is the perfect white chick name Yeah. because um, you always make fun of Becky. Mm -hmm. Um. She paid the five hundred thousand dollars. We have all heard the story. Um, well, she was given a uh, a plea deal by the DA, mm -hmm. and uh, she thought that they were bluffing, so she denied the plea deal. And now she's being hit with uh, even more uh, fraud and money laundering charges. Was it? So I I don't <laughs> I know I heard that, and I wasn't sure. I can't remember if I read it as she thought they were bluffing, like they were going to 
too hard on her. Um, well, yeah, she, they face the original charges in a Boston federal court last week with Huffman. But yeah. Lola and her husband have not agreed to enter to guilty pleas because any deal with prosecutors would have entailed jail behind time behind bars, of course, right? Yeah. Um, they weren't ready to accept that. They're not really seeing how serious it is, is basically what a source That's is saying. That's what it is. Yeah, they're like, no, this can't be that bad. Yeah. And now and, it's uh, worse. They think they, they did. Yeah, they were like, oh, this can't be that serious. And now they're getting hit even harder with yeah. even worse charges. Because um, it's it's uh, fraud and uh, money laundering. Money yeah, laundering. Big, yeah. huge deals, big, huge things. Um, and of course, it won't ever get this way because she's rich, she's white, and she's never really done anything yeah. wrong before this. But. They could face dozens of years in prison mm-hmm. if they are sentenced to the maximum, which, I, like I said, I don't think they will because of the aforementioned reasons. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of funny to me that, it's like, oh, they, they're not serious. They won't, they're not going to charge me with yes. that much. No, yes, they fucking no bitch, are. They really can. They really are, and you done fucked it up. Yeah. You done fucked up. Um, and I, I just find that amusing. Um. I was listening to something talking about that, and um, and I don't know specifically if this was her daughter because yeah. this is a, there's a bunch of people that got caught yeah. in this. Um, but some of these people, they would go so far as when they would fake their SATs, they didn't just fake them as being like good or above average. Yeah, they went for out of like sixteen hundred, they would get like fifteen eighties. Yeah, and make them look like fucking genius level people. These kids who also the fact that they went through the effort of like making them seem like they played on these sports teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, photoshopping them into pictures like they went hog fucking wild. On yeah. The, no, the they, scam, this they whole went scam. real deep on this, man. I was and, like, damn, like they said the price levels is like this guy, like uh, a few hundred grand. And he's like, OK, I'll get the uh, I'll get you through the test. Yeah. And then this. And then it was like a few more hundred grand, like 500 grand or six or something. I, I don't know, like what the top level was. But then he's talking fucking um, paying off coaches. Yeah. Paying yeah. off like high school people, yeah. like photoshopping, like doing going through this whole huge thing. And just as like one dude had his connections. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's it's absolutely insane that the links that they went to. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's that's just something that I thought was really funny. Um, now, on something on a lighter note, something that I think is really really cool. Um, there's a company called Biocarbon Engineering. There, mm-hmm. this is a startup that make drones that they're using to replant trees in I Myanmar. Saw this, yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, this is so fucking cool. And like, they literally fly these drones along like areas where you know deforestation has happened and they fire seed, seed missiles. missiles it's like oh <laughs> dude that's so fucking cool yeah and i'm like oh i love this and and so they're they're just kind of they're just kind of doing that and uh they they recently did a test and they found that they can there are trees that they can plant these are conditions that they can fulfill so they're stepping up their efforts now so there you go to Myanmar. this is going to be drones flying around firing seed missiles into the ground which that's I so think, fucking cool. Yeah, I think that's really, really cool. I like cool. that when we can get to the point where technology is, like, helping out yeah. the environment in yeah. those ways. Uh, I, you know, it's one of the it was one of those videos that you see on Facebook that, you know, just get shared, like a now this type video. Hey. <laughs> no audio. What about, what, what like happened? A, like Brave, a, what happened to blocking video play? Damn it. Um, uh, it's like one of those now. But I also, I've seen it on Reddit where they took... And they just took orange peels. Yeah. And they filled this whole, it, it was like this valley that had been devastated um, by forestation, deforestation and everything. Right, but right. something else caused it so that it was just dead land. And they took all the or- these orange peels and just dumped them there like uh, like you would at a fucking dump. Right. And like something like seven or eight years later and it's fucking overgrowing now with life. Like, oh, because awesome. the orange peels are amazing fertilizer. Yeah. So plants, trees, everything is taken back over this whole area. That's actually pretty nice. Yeah. That sounds awesome. See? I know it was one of those interesting videos. Like the random little things that happen around the world that you don't you're not gonna see on the news or anything. Yeah, because all they're reporting on is war, Donald Trump and people killing stuff each other. That sells. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Our planet has never been more peaceful or safer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or better off for as many people as it is. And everyone is convinced that we're all going to fucking die. Yeah, no, and crime has dropped. Violent crimes like, has dropped. Armed and robberies, the world is murders. fucking ending. Yeah, all this stuff has is, is plummeted, especially in our country. Yeah. Over the years, you look at the FBI crimes, it's all going down. But everyone's like, oh, my God, it's because yeah. facts equals, you know, feelings equals facts these days. Well, I mean, not even just, and I can't blame people on the feelings equals facts, but that's all you see on the media and stuff. 
Yeah, you see this fear mongering. Yeah. yeah I, it's, I, it's, it's I, I love it when uh, I, I still remember being at church and things and this even when I was younger. Yeah. And they would be talking about um, the end times were here because uh, all you see are uh, wars and rumors of wars. Yeah. On, you know, on television stuff. And this right. is in this is like the late 90s. And it's like, but this we've been in a time where the world has been more peaceful than ever in history you're, yeah. you're telling me that the end times wasn't world war one or world war two you know when millions and millions of people were dying daily yeah, that like, wasn't that wasn't armageddon no that wasn't the end no, of no, times. No. now now when the is. iraq war is uh, the iraq war one was happening that was i don't know rumors of wars and oh this, uh, it's, it's just, terrible it's terrible it, it's self-fulfilling prophecy is all it is you can always always talk about how oh the world's getting worse and worse uh-huh. sodom and yep, gomorrah yep. the gays are being let out everywhere Oh yeah, because there's it's such a crime to be a person, exactly. You know, with interests that don't you know, that aren't the norm, aren't like, the, the mainstream. Um, okay, one thing yeah, seen in business. All of a sudden, but yeah, no, don't. Just, I put, son of a yeah. bitch. Oh well. Um, seen in business reports that uh, apparently Amazon, and this is kind of weird, mm-hmm. employs thousands of people to listen to your Alexa conversation. I, I saw a little bit of this and laugh at you, apparently. Yeah. So <laughs> sometimes they laugh at you. I, I, I wouldn't blame them. Like some of the dumb shit I say to my Google Home, I wouldn't doubt that there's a Google employee on the other end of that just laughing his ass off at some of the yeah. dumb shit I say. Um, but uh, basically, it's like I, I kind of understand and I'm not completely angry about it, but it is something that I'm like... It's a little weird. A little concerning, yeah. Uh, basically, what they do is since we're better at recognizing voice mm-hmm. and things that are said than a machine is. They transcribe it for the machine so that the machine can learn a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, but I don't also don't care in a way because I don't have Alexa devices. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I have Google Home devices. Google's made it so they're, they've built their own AI to do this, right? Yeah. To, like, figure, the, figure mean, stuff Amazon out. Amazon has two. Alexa is obviously hooked up to a big neural yeah. network type AI. Um, but they do this to, to kind of help it along yeah. uh, because obviously Google has been doing it a little bit longer. They are the king of voice recognition. Yeah. Like seriously, no one can beat them. You got, you got the Google duplex. You've seen duplex. We've yeah. shown duplex. We've featured duplex on our, our podcast where it can call up and reser- make reservations for you, you yeah. know, make appointments. It's like, and sound like a real human yeah. and it's so creepy but it's so but it's cool. really cool. Yeah. See, and I can use it on my Pixel Two XL. I haven't had a reason to because where the fuck do I go around here? that's going to require a reservation. You yeah. Know? Like, I we'll do walk... it at some point. I'd like to do it just because. Yeah, we can definitely do yeah. that. I'll hold on to my Pixel Two just for that. Yeah. Um. Well, then again, uh, actually, Duplex is coming to non-Pixel phones soon anyway, so I might not need it. Yeah, everything. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's an interesting little snippet, and it's something I kind of want to think like. It's weird because they they reportedly employ thousands of full time workers and contractors in several countries. So it's not just here. It's all over the world. It's, it's you know Costa Rica, Romania, and stuff. And they listen to as many as a thousand audio clips and shifts that last up to nine hours. So. See, I would that that's a job that is would be mind numbing and boring, but at the same time. Just it would be interesting so too. Yeah. Like I, I, I would you find just it hear interesting. What people are level. yelling at their Alexas. Like I've young, I've yelled random gibberish at my Google. Yeah. Like just, I, I love the feature that you can go and listen to uh, everything it's recorded. Yeah. And I didn't, re- I when I found that, I found it accidentally. Yeah. And just was like, what? It's, it's saving this. Oh my god! And then listen to three or four of them, and ninety nine percent of what I tell my Google Home to do is turn off battle station lights. <laughs> Turn on battle station lights. But randomly I'll be like, Google, turn on the lights. Like, <laughs> so it's just random shit like that. Oh, I love it. And I was like, okay, I kind of get this. But yeah, I don't – I mean, it's it's the sort of thing where if you buy one of these things, you've already given up your privacy. Yeah, no. 100%. I mean, I, I'm a very privacy-focused kind of guy. Yeah. And so it, it is very strange for me to have them. But like at the same time – like they are really useful. Yeah. You know, I can get the weather at any time. I don't have to have my phone in my hand. I can get, you know, I can have it turn my lights on and off. I can have it, you know, uh, just do so many things, set, set timers, give me recipes for stuff. Yeah. So it's like, on the one hand, yeah, I'm giving up a bit of my privacy. But on the other hand, though, I am getting utility out of it. And I, Google, obviously, they don't have the best track record when it comes to privacy. No, yeah. But, but they're not Facebook. 
and yeah. until they get to Facebook levels, Facebook level, like I, I will always give up a tiny bit of my privacy for some convenience, as long as I'm getting some legitimate, genuine utility out of it. And there's a good reason for you to have that little bit of my privacy, which in this case, to make the service that you're offering better. Mm-hmm. And of course, to make a little bit of money and target me with ads about like diapers or some shit that I was talking about with someone on the phone that it just happened to pick up. Yeah. A little bit creepy. It's a little weird, but hey. You know, it's like you... when Facebook sits there and shows you ads about things you only thought about <laughs> and you were never, you never mentioned. There were no patterns in your text where you were talking about it. The next thing you know, you, you thought about, you know what, I should buy a lawnmower and then you're seeing fucking lawnmower ads. It's like, what? What annoys me is when I'm getting ads now for things that I bought that had nothing to do with Facebook. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't go well, to Facebook. That and... That's that cross tracking. Yeah, exactly. like, like Amazon does that too. Mm-hmm. I, I like it when Amazon advertises things to me that I just bought. It's like, Oh, well that's Amazon. what I'm talking about. That's what I keep yeah, getting yeah. on, on, on that, Facebook that, now. Yeah, yeah. Cause they track you across the internet. That's yeah. why I use browsers that block tracking like yeah. brave browser i use it on my phone i use it on my desktop i highly recommend it it's chromium based uh, but it blocks all ads and tracking and fingerprinting by default you don't this have to add nice. anything to it um and i use bitwarden that's my password manager another thing i highly recommend and we don't get any money from any of this these are all free and open source programs and none of them are paying us to promote their products but they are things that i i very much yeah very if they much ever wanted to you know <laughs> um, brave is starting something new uh, interesting because you know obviously ads they have to pay for things because nothing mm-hmm. is free you got to pay yeah. for bandwidth you got to pay for storage you got to pay for this that and the other access um so it's compl- i i've always hated ads but i've understood mm-hmm. them and i've always tolerated them um but brave is doing something now where obviously ads are very invasive they 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 track your information they, they which is fine because that's how they work but sometimes they unless you don't you don't want to do it unless that, you want yeah. to well Brave is doing a thing where um, I like having that option they're not. rolling out a feature where they they're they're basically giving you uh, private ads mm-hmm. and uh, you can actually earn money from watching the ads and to pay attention to the ads which is kind of nice uh, you, you sit there and mm-hmm. it's not in mainstream it's not in the main branch yet so I I don't have it um, but you do get uh, in in the beta either the beta or the dev channel, I'm not sure, where they're rolling out a feature where every now and then you'll get like a, hey, you want to watch an ad to keep this, pay this or whatever? And you can click it and it opens the ad up in a private tab so it can't check any of your personal information, Mm -hmm. even less than it normally does. And you watch the ad, you get money. And you can earn 70% of the ad revenue. Mm -hmm. And they estimate that a a normal user will get like up to 70 bucks a year just sitting there watching ads. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. And of course, they have the basic attention token, mm-hmm. which is a like a cryptocurrency that you can buy. Um, pardon me, and uh, you can just use that to tip creators and stuff. Which, by the way, I'm a creator. Go to my website, give me some bat. <laughs> Jlgasson.com. Give me some money. That's the one way you can help us out. Um, I, I'm still working on getting us uh, approved. I've just been lazy. I've been yeah, dragging my good. feet on it, as you know. I I have a million things to do at once. It's one of these things that I, it's cool. And I like, I, I, I don't use the Brave browser. I still use Chrome. Right. Even though it's eating up fucking all my system resources. Um, but uh, it's it's one of those things that I just don't think it's ever going to take off. Yeah. Seriously. Like, if it did, that would be great. I mean, I, it's something that's slowly gaining market share. I think they had, like, something yeah. like 5.5 million users last year. That's pretty good. Which is, yeah, that's a huge, like, obviously that's a very tiny jump. Yeah. Compared to something like Chrome or Firefox. But it's also a very large amount mm-hmm. of users for a browser. Yeah. So uh, it's weird when you look at, uh, I mean, and that's the internet age, is you look at something that hasn't taken off, quote unquote, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, this is, you know, it's it's almost nothing. And it's yeah. like, oh, well, how many active users do you have? Oh, only 4.8 million. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's that's a fucking, that's 4.8 million people. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of fucking people. It's yeah. like, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's you know, it's disappearing yeah. a year. Or but yeah, it, you sit you there know. and you look at something like Chrome, which has like 163 million users. Or uh, no, yeah. oh, well, more way more than, than that. that. Yeah, but it's, it's like, it, it's got like 68% of the market share yeah. or something. So something Crazy like this. Amounts. Yeah. Or like those random teeny social networks that pop up. Yeah. And yeah. that like only, you know, you have like one friend who knows about it and tells you about it and you're yeah. like, what? And you look at it and they're really trying to promote it and stuff. And it's like, this is pathetic. There's probably like 25 people on this. And it's like, oh, no, they are small, but, you know, 25 
hundred thousand, you know, like two hundred fifty thousand members, or uh, yeah, yeah. You know, four, eight, ten million members, something like that. Yep. And it's like, oh well, I mean, I guess... it was kind of me with Elo. Like Elo, I wanted to like it, and um, it's a nice little social network. Mm-hmm. I don't care. It didn't really, it didn't really hold my interest. <laughs> Fucking and... Google Plus. <laughs> It is not the disaster that Google Plus is. Oh, man. But I still remember Google when Plus, they required it for your YouTube comments. Dude, they had so much potential with Google Plus. They really, really did. It was it was at the time. Mm-hmm. I, I think I, I really do believe it was technically superior to Facebook. Like, I really do. Believe I think that. that's part of the problem. Yeah. Is yeah. that it just wasn't it. Everybody Facebook took over because it was myspace 2.0 it was so it just sign up and go yeah that it's I mean, so simple and bullshit that i mean the thing with google plus it was everybody. the same way though it was you, you just signed up well at first it was invite only yeah which um, which i thought would help it yeah because they you know the the fear of missing out type thing mm-hmm. exclusive club everyone wants to be a part of yeah and i think it kind of did but very quickly it did people interest went away the funny thing is if i had stuck with using it really heavily i could have been a verified user on there which you know little, little blue check mark that's a, that's an important thing because i mean my 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 circles are growing because they didn't have friendless they had circles yeah which was a nice concept and Luke's not every your every mic. week my mic stand falls we got to get a new table <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um anyway yeah no it, it was one of those things that was it was nice i liked the interface it was clean it was sharp it was simple and, and i don't know man it just it didn't it didn't take off the way google had hoped and I, it's like a lot of things that google does they start a project and they just don't promote it well they don't promote it right and then it just falls off the fucking map when google i, I was somebody else was describing google's projects and like one of the people on the it was a podcast i was listening to, i remember which one yeah probably the official um somebody's like google fucks up everything and somebody else is like are you fucking kidding me like look at chrome look at all their success with their you know cell phones and different stuff google when they they have lots and lots of different stuff yeah they're, they're when they they're hit, a massive company man when they are successful alphabet, with alphabet something that is huge they have yeah. so many things they got going on when they are successful with something it's completely dominant. Yeah. It takes over everything. They have tons of failures. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely do. But when they're, when they're successful, they dominate the market. Like Chrome taking over that much of a share. Yeah. It, it's, some, it's something like 70% of active internet users on, on today use Chrome. Yeah. Uh, Android has 86% or something like that. Something around that yeah. number of the world smartphone market share. Like an Android based phone is in 86% of the world's like uh, of the people who own cell phones in the world, 86% of them own an Android based cell phone. It's crazy. Like no, Google homes as Google assistants. It's everywhere. It's in speakers. It's in, you know, web browser. You can have it in your web browser now. Like, come on, man. Like, dude, it, it's everywhere. Uh, Gmail is exceedingly popular. I see more people with Gmail addresses than almost any other. Uh, Google search, of course, their original product and the thing that keeps them on top of the world. It is the, it is one of the best search engines on the planet. And no I mean, doubt. their their ads default pretty much are. I, I can't I can't imagine that they're not the number one ad provider on the on the. Oh internet. yeah, absolutely they are. Google AdSense, AdWords, all that shit, man, yeah. is absolutely the best provider. I am going to have to find a way to anchor that until we can get a new table. I got it. I just had to move it. The spot I was on, like. It's is depressed. completely yeah. depressed. Yeah. So, moved it over a bit. And it'll hey, be fine. I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, ah, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Our generation wants to kill itself. Yay! Uh, <laughs> Yay! Suicide. There's, there's a stupid channel that all they upload is like a uh, vibe. Um, um, vine, not vine. Fucking uh, TikTok. TikTok compilations. So and the, basically Vine 2.0. Vine 2.0. Yeah. And the end of it is something. They have like a jingle of uh, uh, if you enjoy this uh, and want to kill yourself, then subscribe or something. It's, it's a oh. funny little jingle. And every time I'm like, uh, I subscribe simply because of the jingle. Like, yeah. I, I, I watched. I was like, oh, that's a moderately funny thing. Normally, I just move on from a compilation. Yeah. Uh, channel, but that, that fucking jingle, I was like, "Yep, nope, subscribe." You, you, you earned a you subscription win. there, buddy. you earned this. That, that's good stuff. <laughs> I do want to kill myself. It's so funny. Mental illness, yay! We should probably do something about it. Hey, you know what? 
but uh, we won't. No. Because no one takes mental illnesses seriously. Uh, I think more and more we do in our society a little bit. I mean, yeah, we're getting but, to a point where we, we acknowledge it more. Yeah. It's not it's not something where, you know, oh, you're fucking depressed? Well, fucking tie your shoelaces tighter and get out there and fucking do more. It's not you know, like... Uh, it's not always that simple. It's not that boomer mentality anymore yeah, yeah. where they realize, oh, shit, no, this stuff actually... Uh, this is it's, a it's fucking actually serious. It's medical we should, condition. We should talk about this. We should do something about it. Yeah. Which shouldn't. is kind of nice. Like, uh, that, that's a nice thing because I know plenty of people who suffer from depression and do yeah. have suicidal thoughts. And if you do, man, you know, we love you. Keep it. Keep your head up. Yeah. You know, if we're... If I'm the voice... If Luke's the voice, if we're the voice that, that keeps you from ending it, that's fucking amazing. And, you know, seriously, keep your head up. I mean, I actually legitimately love that stuff where you see um, every once in a while, like, uh, read those stories. You know, half of them might be fake, but there's sweet little stories where it's like somebody's driving down the street and they're, they have had just a fucking terrible day. Yeah. Know, they had a loss in their family. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, lost had a job, terrible someone. breakup, lost yeah. their job, yeah. whatever it it's is. All shit. It's and all shit. they're in that depressed, like, I'm going to fucking end it. And you pass somebody on the street who all they're doing is holding up signs that say, you matter. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's, you know, I don't know. And they read that kind of stuff. It's like, whether or not it's true, it's like a little pick me up. I mean, there have been times where I've thought about doing that. You know, just going out. Something like that. Yeah. I I fucking love the the people who walk around with, like, the free hugs signs. Yeah, yeah, right. At cons and stuff. The dude who's free shrugs. He's like, hey, hey. And dude turns around. Can I get one? The guy's like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, thanks, bro. I love that. We should go to cons, man. I've thought about it. I want to. I've been to one, two cons. Um, Uh, I went to a semi it was it wasn't much it was a comic book yeah, kind yeah. of everything small expo type thing yeah like yeah. you know that an expo in michigan dude Evan, let's go to furry gone oh god just make fun of everything and get yiffed to death let's not um yeah no fuck that rich, what's, what's, what's i can definitely tell you um i got it on good authority pile. to avoid ax anime expo out in la let's not do that why don't we go all the way out to la i don't know why not but were we talking about doing that Actually, I think we were at one time. And, uh, yeah, but I, um, I got it on good authority. Do not. Unless you want to be around a bunch of uh, smelly anime weeps. Well, I mean, that's... You, that's a given, going right. to any con. But, like, like, I still want to go to Comic-Con. Yeah, and absolutely. And Comic-Con is, like, awful. It's in, like, <laughs> August... It's uh, it's absolutely fucking overcrowded. Yeah, it's all comic book nerds. It's all a lot of which haven't showered and are you know sweaty, and it is apparently pretty awful in there. I I will admit that I do not shower if I know I'm not going anywhere. Like if, if I'm, I'm sitting if I'm on staying, my ass, if I'm yeah. staying in the house and nobody else has to deal with me, I'll skip a shower a day. Yeah, if I leave. But if I yeah, if there's any plans made to go anywhere. Yeah. I'm washing my balls right away. Yeah. Like, I can't, no. Like, I, I will sit in my filth if I know I'm not going anywhere and no one has to deal with me. I don't have to look at people, you know. But, like, I, even if I, like, you know what, I'm going to order some food. I will shower before I place the order mm-hmm. just so the guy at the delivery door doesn't have to deal with me. And I don't think I've ever really smelled, but it doesn't matter. The it's a la- principle the, of the thing. The laziest I've done is I've ordered food and been like, fuck, I didn't get a shower. And I don't feel like putting on pants. So I'll be like, hey, Grandma, you need to answer the door in about 15 minutes. <laughs> get Grandma. My door Grandma, I'll get my food. Uh, usually if I do that, though, I'll be like, you want food? I'm going to get food. Here, yeah, I'll no, order you some food, too. That's, that's then pretty I fair. It's like, okay, at least she's kind of getting yeah, yeah, food, yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know, man. Like, like that, that's really the only time I can justify in my own head. That yeah. and when I'm about to clean the house. Because I'm about to get dirty. Yeah. So sitting there showering before I clean the house is dumb. But after I'm done cleaning the house, I 100% get in that shower because I don't know what the fuck I gather on the floor, but it's it's not cool. If I'm in the past, and it'll probably happen this summer, if I'm out doing yard work and I have to go get something to complete that yard work yeah. and come back and keep working, then it's like, fuck it. I'm just spraying myself with axe and i'm at fucking lowe's or home depot anyway i'm half covered in dirt they know exactly why i'm there yeah it's like exactly, no you yeah. you fucking you guys get they, it they excuse it they're, they, like, oh, they're, they're like oh they're working hard today I'm yeah fucking planting goddamn flowers or doing just filling goddamn holes with dirt or some shit 
or making holes and filling other things. Whatever. Yeah, well, whatever just, you're, you're doing actual do. stuff, though. Right? Yeah, that's I'm when it's like... I'm just sitting on my computer. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm going to play some video games, and then I don't play video games because I end up watching videos on YouTube or something on Reddit distracts me. Which, by the way, I'm like... Fi- I'm 11 chapters behind now on some of the uh, D&D green text I've been reading. <laughs> Uh, I'm sitting there like I've got 11 unread messages right now and it's like oh god and then I'm trying to write my own stuff because I want to get that done because that's something I've been trying to do for like years and I've just not done it it's like god I've been uh I've I I've said before I've got audible and I've had two like I'm two credits so I, I ended up finding and just getting two books um but I've got so now three or four because then they started giving away free audible originals oh, so i've wow. got like okay. four books i i need to listen to right now i this it's like 14 hours long or something i don't remember how long it is but it's this book i got one of the free ones actually yeah on world war one that i've been listening to at work uh and in other times and it's really it's a, it's a history it's a historic, right, very right, historical right. book it's right. not Super entertaining, but I kind of I like I like history. history. I like yeah. this sort of thing. Yeah. So I've yeah. been listening to that, and but I can't I can't listen to it for long. Like like if I'm listening to uh, one of my one of the fiction books I listen to, like right, right, right. the Dresden Files, um, some of the others I've listened to, I will seriously have to stop myself, or I'll go a whole day and not take headphones out of my ears. Yeah. Like at home and anywhere, I will I, like I'll play like. The most basic games, like I play fucking Minesweeper, or I'll play like it's that's how I, when I used yeah, to play Minecraft. Yeah, no. yeah, was listening to audiobooks and just consuming these audiobooks as quickly as possible. I uh, I'll, I'll do something similar. Like sometimes I'll just sit there and uh, listen to music or listen to something mm-hmm. else. And I'll just be sitting there playing solitaire. Yeah, for like seven hours. I don't know how I could play solitaire for so long, but I'll just sit there and play solitaire, man. Like eh, fuck it, why not? And then you look and it's like, wait, how long has it been? Oh, like, oh, it's been 16 hours. What the fuck? I th- <laughs> Did I have something to do yesterday? <laughs> oh, shit. Was I supposed to go to work? Yeah. What day is it? Oh, God. What it's... year is it? Oh, God. It's it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I just started doing this on Monday. <laughs> Actually, if uh, anybody has any suggestions for like, I love fantasy is my genre. Right. If anybody has any suggestions for any like series, because that's I I I I'll, I'll listen I'll listen to I'll read listen to single books, but I really need a new fantasy or sci-fi or something like a series to get into. Right. Yeah. Because uh, I've gone through quite a few. I'm still waiting on the next Resident Files book. Right. Um. God, man, I need a new I need a new series to listen to. <laughs> I listened to the first book of the Dwarves. Uh Um, which was way longer than I expected it to be. Right. Like the setup for that story. I didn't like, like I fully expected it to be the three or four books to beat the big bad. But apparently like the second book is set like 200 years in the future. I mean, the dwarves, they live for a long fucking time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but that's why I was like, I listened to the first book and I, I, I don't really care to listen to the next one because I, the ending's kind of a cliff. It leads into the other one, but it's, it's like, if Star Wars, they if the um, eight, nine, and ten, yeah, uh, or seven, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine yeah, um, had come out a year later, a couple of years later, and the villain had no connection whatsoever to the original villain. <laughs> like if it was the Uzan, if they had done the Uzan Vong, yeah, from the book series, right? It, it's like I don't really care. I don't. I don't really. I don't need that because I already got the complete story. Right. Or if Lord of the Rings, like there was some other evil that like popped up and or literally fell from the sky. Yeah. So it's like no, I, I got what I wanted out of it. I'm, I'm I'm happy with these characters where they were at the end of this book. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> I'm good. I don't. I don't need it. I'm happy. I'm yeah, happy. Now. It's like I I didn't dislike the writing, but. As like it feels like I got the whole story, right? And right. it did not, you. it didn't hook me as much as uh, my favorite series, The Dresden Files. Yeah, it's fucking, I oh, love those books. That's one of those things that I'd, I'd like to maybe maybe get into is mm-hmm. The Dresden Files because I've heard so much good about it. You and Jake and, and others have gone off on like the deep end about how amazing it is. I'm like, all right, I'll look into it because it's just a detective, right? It's just a dude. He's a mod- He's a uh, he's a wizard. In the phone book, like he's de- he's kind of like set up like a detective. Yeah. But in the phone book, he said it just says Wizard Fire, uh, lost thing. I can't remember his little like 
quote thing under it, like lost things found. Blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, stuff blah, like blah. that. Right, yeah. So in, in the first couple books are really like obviously the fantasy aspect mixed with it's almost a detective novel. Yeah. And then it kind of gets like bigger a, and like bigger and bigger. Like a noir type stuff. Yeah, almost yeah. noir. Almost. Yeah. He fa- The funny thing is the character, Harry Dresden, like fancies himself as that like dashing noir kind of detective. And it's, then he just ends up being like a lanky fucking bastard. That's awesome. And fucking things up. And then like <laughs> tripping his way through. And then one of the things I love about this, uh, the books is generally... It kind of like it kind of he explains a little bit or or the author writes a little bit of the setup for Harry's plan. And then the climax happens. The, you know, the villain, whatever that book's thing is, starts happening. And then his plan falls into place as you you don't know what it is yet. And it just it usually is like a big like a twist or he's done something clever. At one point, he raised a Tyrannosaurus Rex from the dead and oh. rode it into battle in one of the books. I'm down with it that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's they're just fucking great modern fantasy as well as the amount of fantasy in fairy tale things that mix into the books. Yeah. Uh, is insane. Yeah. It mixes like it mixes everything. He even started mixing in um, Lovecraftian stuff. Yeah. Where I love the background for it in one of the side books it's described that no, no, these things exist, and they weren't had no power. Unfortunately, some little asshole in Romania, uh, they of fucked course, with his Romania. mind. I can't remember where Lovecraft is from, honestly. They fucked with his mind, so he started writing a bunch of poems that got really popular. Uh. People started actually reading these things, and the more that it's in the zeitgeist, the more power the beings have, the, oh, oh, the go- oh, gods have. Um, so fuck. now... Cthulhu is legitimately powerful. <laughs> I can't remember what Mythopia, something like that. Mythopia, where you where gods get their power from, from their worship. Yeah. Them. yeah, there's Which quite is, a few series that I've I've read with that. I, mean, that, I love that. I that's love. how the Elder Scrolls works. Period. Mm-hmm. Like like the followers of each individual Daedra and uh, uh, Adra, they all get their power from their worshippers. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's, it's kind of that's how the Living Tribunal, the three gods of Morrowind, that's how they work to begin with. You know, mm-hmm. in a sense, anyway, is that the more people People that worship Vivek, the more more powerful Vivek got, and same thing with the what the fuck's her name? The oh, I can't remember now. Um, but she, you find her in Mordhole, and you actually have to kill her. Um, spoiler alert for a twenty year old game. Yeah, if you're um, gonna go back and how, play that, no, God. like what eighteen years old now? Yeah. It's fifteen. I don't know. It's fucking old. It may be more than that. Well, I mean, it was like two thousands, early two thousands. I don't. Yeah. I played it on the Xbox in two thousand three. Yeah. So if you haven't played Morrowind, yeah, you you kill the gods. Mm. Like literally, well, at least one of them. Well, um, it's kind of the way that uh, uh, what's his name, the Nord dude who became a god that the elves Talos? don't like, Talos. Like, isn't that some kind of how he became a god? He had no. all his followers, and then no, um, or he did he, he do stuff and then get promoted? He became a god. Uh, it, it's kind of murky how mm. he actually became a god. Like, the, obviously, the the you know the the, the the legend holds that he um. He was uh, like he was so great in life that the gods lifted him yeah, up and turned him that's into a god. Was, yeah. um, what actually happened isn't it, it's it's not super clear, mm-hmm. um, but we know that Talo Stormcrown, the god himself, was made up of like two to three different people, and some of the things that he did, some of the things he was responsible for, uh, caused dragon breaks and allowed him to uh-huh. mantle another god, and yeah. So it's he, the, he all that's kind of confusing. Yeah. And mantling is, in the Elder Scrolls is the act of uh, taking the place of another being, mm-hmm. where you screw up the dream so much that the dreamer doesn't know quite what's going on, and then the next thing you know, you're in that god's position. So uh, Talos mantled Lorcan, and mm-hmm. Lorcan was one of the original gods that uh, was the trickster god in a way, mm-hmm. and he was one of the original gods that. Uh, you know, got together with Magnus and the, ar- the architect who created. Mundus and, and all that and it's, it's really fucking weird and there's so much behind it and I don't feel like going into it because I could seriously be drawn on so about I like the, the, the simple in the game uh, he was awesome and the gods made him a god yeah. and the elves don't like it yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and like the crazy thing about about Talos is, if they manage to get him to a point where he is weakened, uh, they they uh, if I recall correctly, they're able to cancel convention. Yeah, C- convention was the universe; it's the, it's the creation. So they're able to go back to their uh, elephanty uh, roots, where they were just beings of energy. Yeah, which is what the elves want. It's yeah, fucking complicated shit. I don't like elves. Yeah, no, I I don't either, <laughs> it's and it's bags. dumb and stupid, and I hate them. Yeah. But it's so complex and it's so. But they have the most magic. And if you want to roll with the most magica, <laughs> yeah, great high elves. High elves, high elves have the most magica. But the Bretons, which are the half elves of this world, mm-hmm. they have twenty five percent resistance to all magic. Yeah, and so they're that's pretty goddamn awesome. Really too. fucking useful. Mm. This that's... my second Skyrim character was a Breton. Yeah, I was gonna make a mage and mage anti mage. You sit there and you combine it with the Lordstone and. Just the most powerful resist enchantment you can. You can hit that. You can hit that cap, mm. which is like eighty-seven point five percent or something like that, where all magic redu- damage reduction is reduced by that much. Mm-hmm. Meaning that if you are good enough and you are strong enough, you can stand in a legendary dragon's breath and not take any damage, <laughs> um, which is always cool. It's pretty awesome. Um, but we do have uh, one final thing that you wanted to touch on. Yes, because um, it's kind of bi- a big fucking deal. It is a big fucking deal. Um, so this, uh, just the yesterday, I want to say, was the first day of Star Wars Celebration. Yep. And this year they, they did something kind of interesting where uh, they live streamed the um, main, the episode nine, um, uh, what do you call it? The panel. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't I didn't actually watch much of the live stream because I didn't care. Um, I mean I didn't even JJ know what was going was, on. They, so. they were in yeah, they were in. I didn't either. I the only reason I knew it was going on is I saw one of my YouTube channels was live streaming their reaction to it. So oh. that's how I kind of clicked and saw that for a couple minutes. Right. But it was like I guess they had Stephen Colbert was the head the 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 the, the announcer or whatever you want to call the panel right, right, person yeah. and then he was talking to JJ Abrams and talking to Kathleen Kennedy and I clicked it off cuz they're like oh we're going to talk to the cast and they pulled out um the actor who plays C3PO and R2D2 and I was like that's cool I'm I'm done <laughs> Like, like I don't really care about the beeps and boops and like we got mad respect the, for those guys. Yeah, but the dude playing C three PO. Like really, you can yeah. get someone at least a little bigger. Get, uh, get uh, the guy that plays Finn or plays. I guess Poe. I mean I'm sure they all came out, yeah. but I wasn't. I didn't really give a you shit just, to sit through all that because like, they're not gonna give you anything. No, they're not. It's like watching the Marvel character, the Marvel actors and actresses doing interviews. Well, right except now. Mark Ruffalo and uh, what's his name, uh, fucking Tom Holland Tom, will yeah, give you. They shit. might give you some shit. Mark because Ruffalo they're, they're spoiling the guy damn Avengers Infinity War six years early. So that's why <laughs> yeah right that's why I've just stopped watching that shit. Yeah. I've completely stopped paying attention to all of that. I'll watch the funny stuff. Yeah um, like their outtakes or them goofing off and stuff. Did yeah. you see that image that popped up on Reddit of uh, it was Scarlett Johansson and Chris Evans they were sitting there playing classic Game Boys? Yeah. It was yeah. adorable looking. I was like oh that's cool. It's pl- fucking classic Game Boy with the link cable. I don't know what they were playing. I didn't pay that much attention but I was like, that, that's really cool. It's kind of adorable. There was another video it was completely off topic now but I'll get back to Star Wars in a second here um, where the, I guess I think they were going to the premiere and Hemsworth is walking down the hallway with a marker and he is drawing on the post the character posters like giving fucking mustaches and like glasses to Chris uh Chris Evans, Evans yeah. and like drawing like goatees and shit on them like doing that kind of juvenile shit um he gets to uh uh Robert Downey Jr and he draws I heart Thor on his <laughs> cheek like he's doing this shit and then as he's walking down the hallway uh I can't remember his name the guy who plays Hawkeye who he just drawn on comes towards him and he's like hey and he grabs him and turns him around like oh you don't need to go that way <laughs> they keep going <laughs> Oh, man. This is so fucking funny, that, man. That's great. Yeah, no, I love that guy, man. That, that's one of those dudes that you look at and just go, he's a cool motherfucker. He's, yeah, like legitimately in and out like of the movie. He's he's like a funny, he's a funny, cool dude. Um, you see that? You see, I know you saw that video where Thor was a roommate. Yes. yes yeah, yeah, That was fucking God, oh. I love those videos. All right, so anyway. Yes, yeah, so Star, Star Wars. Wars, so they did this, um, and it all culminated into they revealed the name for episode nine. And they finally played a teaser trailer, which ever we kind of been waiting for. Um, and I mean, I haven't been. Um, no, no. Well, I, I haven't been excited for it. Like, we're not gonna go into 
all of this problems with eight again but needless to say it left a bad enough taste in my mouth that like i didn't even care to see solo i finally did and solo's better than i expected it's not great but it didn't it didn't deserve as little as it made in the in the theater like solo like is solo ended the um side movies the uh star wars stories like rogue one did well so yeah, it no, wasn't I, a great movie. I mean, Rogue One was Rogue One was fine. I enjoyed it. It had one hell of a depressing yeah. ending, but it was it was fine. Eight pissed off a good chunk of the fan base, and it, then so many dumb instead decisions. of just you know either accepting it or just being like it's okay, some people didn't like it. They started accusing the fans of all the bullshit and all that stuff. And then if you don't like it, don't watch it. And it turns out, hey, guess what happens to your next fucking movie? A lot of people didn't end up seeing Solo. It mm. didn't do anywhere near what they you, they expected, and they put a kibosh on stories. Yeah, well, I and mean, like, like to the point now where Bob Iger, even before this, because I was this is something I was going to mention for the we were going to talk about. Yeah. Bob Iger announced that after nine, they're, they're taking a break. Taking a break. They're yeah. taking a hiatus of Star from Star Wars. Good. That's what they need to do. They need yeah. to sit there. It was they too need, much. They need to sit there. They need to figure out exactly where they want to go. And they yeah. need to they need to come up with a good plan to get there. Because so, I mean, like I'm all for you know, I, I do want to touch on just a little bit of what Eight did wrong. I do want to. I I always have to reiterate. I, um, I mean, you had a strong female character, which is fantastic, but you didn't give us a reason to really think she was good. You know, you had your loose cannon. Oh my God, there was something else about that where um, the amount of like things they were going with with that character was she was she was like. It was awful. The well, what, like I, she was. I can't remember if she was supposed to be written like an not not dumb, but way more. There was I I don't remember exactly. You know, I saw where the early write ups that the fucker had come up with yeah. for her character were even worse. Were even like holy fuck, what are you doing? Well, anyway, all I mean, I got to say like like I'm all for that strong female character i always like ray yeah. ray's a great strong female but character. it's like you she have, wasn't she wasn't developed you there had was to nothing a, to her yeah you had to give us a reason and they no. didn't give us any reason and people sit there saying well you have to read the book i shouldn't have to read no the book she's not even the in the fucking book like the book that has her is has nothing she's not a commander she's not like all she is is an independent person right that hung okay. out with leia years before leia even uh before episode one yeah when leia was just traveling around i think she was technically part of the rebellion, but her only influence on the rebellion is she would go and talk to senators in different planets. Well, like my, it was my thing is like, anything. oh, so so like, I get it. They did it to create conflict, but you yeah. had the loose cannon in Poe, and she didn't once throughout the entire movie reveal the plan or that she even had a plan. She just kept with this smugness, and like you have the loose cannon, you know he's going to do something stupid, and he does. And it's like the scene with the casino and all that, the rich planet. Oh, fuck. You can, that was you all can, terrible. You cut that entire thing out. I thought it was fun in the moment. Looking back, it's dumb. It doesn't add anything. The love story you shoot a horn in between fucking Poe and Rose was dumb. The sacrifice to, to keep you know Poe or sorry Finn from sacrificing <laughs> we himself. We only win with love. No, bitch, you just killed just everybody. How many? How many fucking rebels Ugh. were guarding that door that you just got wiped the fuck out. There were 16 people left at the end, bitch. You killed everybody. There was everybody. like 16 fucking rebels and left. They like, were all like, murdered. It's like, and then of course the decision <sighs> to keep Leia in the movie and kill Luke off and like there was and, a lot of... And like you, you got you got that reversed. Luke's still alive. <laughs> Mark Hamill is here. Mark Hamill is alive. He's doing voice acting still for Joker but you you killed his character off, but the actress who died, you kept her character. Why? After her okay. floating through space. Uh, I think, honestly, that's kind of like... The it's story just the is story a mess. Beats. It doesn't... It's incoherent. Yeah. You've got stupid reasons for stupid things, and I'm done. Let's it was on. also killing storylines that were set up in the first movie. Right. Um, J.J. Abrams, I think, said something recently which made people question whether there was a plan between these three movies whatsoever. Right. Which the original Star Wars had different directors for all three movies. Right. The thing is, even though it had those three different directors, there was a 
plot. There was, there was a, a plot, we yeah. have this, this setup. We have boom, boom, boom. Lucas knew where he was taking things. With 7, 8, 9, it really feels like J.J. Abrams was just, you know, we, here, go with the first movie, write it. The next guy came in and just went, I'm just going to fucking do my own thing. Um, no, whatever the fuck the asshole's name is. Uh, he came in, just did whatever he wanted. The director for Nine said, what is this garbage? I'm not following that. This is terrible. They fucking kicked him off the movie because of it. Yeah. And then they went back to J.J. Abrams. So the reason we're bringing this up, like we said, the trailer came out, and the trailer yes. is actually really, really good. I have to admit that, um, I mean, 8 turned me off to new Star Wars stuff. Yeah. It, it completely did. Like, it, like, it, like it, for all the reasons that I just ranted about for eight minutes or whatever, like, all of those reasons made that movie so terrible. And I was, I'm, I'm not turned off Star Wars. It didn't ruin Star Wars as a franchise, right? Because I still love the original. I still I, have that. Yeah. You, know, you can't take that episode away Episode 1, 2, and 3, they were not good. But they can be enjoyed. Four, five, and six, of course, the originals are still really good. I have the despecialized editions, so I've watched them, and they are they still hold up. And I still, I still, still watch the special editions, like yeah, like even even being Christmas a little ugh, no, I won't watch that. <laughs> even being a little bit not not the 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 the. the the movie, the theater version we want. Yeah. Uh, they're still amazing. They're still good movies. Amazing movies. They're yeah. still movies from my childhood. I yeah, can quote. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're most not of movies them from endlessly. my childhood. I didn't actually yeah. see the, the, I did not see the original movies until I was well into my 20s. That's when we sat out here, yeah. you know, a few years back and watched them, mm -hmm. which I think we actually slept through most of them, but that's okay. I don't remember. I know. Well, I mean, it's just, a, you know, you, you grew up less with movies and more with Video yeah, games and TV. Um, video games and TV shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I I watched a lot of movies, but they were whatever was on Cinemax or whatever was on HBO yeah. or whatever was on uh, whatever the other channels were. Uh, I can't remember. Now. You had movie channels. See, yeah. My the first place I watched Star Wars was TNT. Right. Like was those channels with commercials and everything. Yeah. Um, and I still remember when I watched the end of A New Hope or no, it was uh, Empire Strikes Back. And the end of that movie is so fucking, it's like, it's, it's dark, but it's, it's the end, the actual end where Luke's getting his cybernetic arm put on. Um, they're like, it's still hope. They're still talking about, you know, we're going to save Han and yada, yada. Right. And I still remember seeing the end and my dad being like, okay, it's time for bed. And I'm like, no, it, it's not <laughs> over. There's more to come. Like, this isn't over. It's yeah. like, they're not showing the next movie tonight. You got to see the next movie. And I was like, but no, it's not done yet. <laughs> I have to see what happens next. Like, but that's that's how I originally saw them of when they got re-released, the special right, editions. Right, I right. watched them there. And then, yeah, that, that was the first time I had ever seen the D special edition when I downloaded uh, A New Hopes. Uh, but this trailer actually like jj abrams managed to like i said or i was going to mention like i said with solo i didn't see solo in theater i'd waited like it, it was like two weeks ago or a week ago that i saw solo for the first time because right, right. i had such a bad taste after eight and it didn't help that the like a lot of not only disney but it, maybe not Disney is the wrong word to use, but yeah. people uh, like in the industry, right? And they it, it, sure there were a lot of shitty people online. The people that gave so much shit to um, what's her face, uh, Finn's quote Rose. unquote, yeah, Rose, Rose. whatever. Like, her they gave that actress, you know, t so much hate and shit, which was stupid. Yeah, it's, I, I will that's never, shitty. I will never defend that. I will but never. Don't loop that. everyone who dislikes the movie in with those assholes, yeah. and then say we're entitled. Star Wars fans or all this other bullshit they used to say to people who get mad at video game companies for putting in fucking microtransactions and live service bullshit. No, fuck you. We expect a good product. It's not, we're, you're not, we're not, um, we're not giving to, we're like, we're not serving you. Yeah. You're serving us. So yes. you know what happens? Your next movie fucking flops. They didn't deserve to flop. Sure, some solo was stupid, but overall, it was. It, I'd say it's probably a little bit better than Rogue One as a whole story right, and everything. Right. It still revealed too much about Han Solo, but it was okay. I would like to see more going forward instead of doing another trilogy. If they take breaks and like we get the uh, Obi Wan movie or something, and I don't really want backstory stuff. Yeah, but if we got an Obi Wan movie that took place before Episode One, 
or I mean, uh, episode four. Yeah. Uh, between, New Hope. Between three and four. Yeah. Where I'd like you, that. You just kind of see what he's been doing between like those two Something movies. specific. How specifically he... stuff from Rebels, where yeah. he fucking, Darth Maul shows back up. Right. And he fucking kills Maul, which is a good, that would give a good link between Solo and that. Right, because right. he the spoiler is he, Solo. Uh, Darth Maul shows up at the very end. I might, I might watch Solo. Yeah, it's. Not I might, terrible. I might go like rent it three, four bucks or whatever. Cause yeah, it's not, there's that's not dumb it. things in it, but it's like uh, okay, it's I o- mean, it's okay. I can um, deal with dumb things. I it should have, like I said, it anyway. should have made more money in the theater, especially because it's fucking Star Wars. Right, but hey, that's what happens. And I a mean, little bit of Star, it's Star Wars fatigue too. I think people were just yeah. I mean, you, you're getting a Star done. Wars movie literally every year. Yeah, you, and you got to slow that dish. You got to slow that shit down because you got to remember of the original movies. There's only there were only three for like 20 years, mm-hmm. and then they released three more. It's it's and so it's weird. Been Ten or 15 years since that. One of the things that was said about um, uh, Force Awakens was it was so much put on J.J. Abrams to bring people back to Star Wars. Right. So, yeah, there's a lot of Force Awakens that is just a, a, a pretty close retread Reshoots, yeah, of, of the original movie. The first movie and the second movie. Yeah. And parts of both of those and, and the others in general. And But it kind of it, it needed that. It kind of, at least to yeah, me, no, it I mean, brought me back into you needed, it. You needed that nostalgia kick. This yeah. trailer does exactly that. Yes. In spades. Like, if you haven't seen the trailer, go see it. I'm going to talk about it anyway. Fucking, there's just a quick scene where Lando is in the motherfucking Millennium Falcon flying and going into hyperspace. And when I watched it the first time, I fucking giggled like a little girl. I was so goddamn happy to see, um, um, uh, fuck, uh, Billy D. Billy Williams. D. Williams. Yeah. yeah. Billy D. Williams. He's in the, like the Lando's clothes and everything. He looks fucking great. And it's like, Oh my God, it's Billy D. Fucking Williams. Oh, uh, like honestly, when we were sitting there watching the trailer before we recorded our Patreon video, mm-hmm. that's actually what sold me on it. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you got Ray doing some cool shit. She's flipping over a uh, 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 fucking, what's his name? Uh, I think it's Kylo Ren's tie interceptor. Kylo a new Ren's tie. thing, yeah. So he's sitting there, yeah. she's doing the flip or whatever. Which, that's cool. That's, whatever, I don't care, Matrix shit. The cool, like, but I'll talk we, about that, but go ahead. But when we got to that point where mm-hmm. you, you just had, you had, you had fucking Lando just sitting in the Millennial Falcon. And I think. Next to Chewie? Next to Chewie, yeah. I'm pretty sure Chewie so, yeah. was next to him. And he's like, yeah, baby. And he's fucking and he's just it. smiling. Yeah, he's, he's so he's like, like yahoo. That's like, what sold me on it. That's uh, literally so what sold me on it. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to go see that. Yeah. Just for that. And if that scene is not in the movie, I will go burn J.J. in his house down. <laughs> I'll find you, J.J. Abrams. <laughs> I will find you. And I will actually not do anything because no, I'm not a psychopath. Lazy for that. But. Oh, so that. <laughs> um, yeah, that that first scene though, where she, like, it's her playing essentially playing chicken with a tie fighter. Yeah. Um, where she does a goddamn back, pulls the lightsaber, does a backflip, and looks like that's like they haven't done much in the in Force Awakens had some cool moments. Yeah. Um, I mean, admittedly, there were some cool moments in Episode Eight, which I can't yeah, even remember the but, fucking title for. But now. like the the main thing to me in episode eight was this the the um the the fight after they kill snoke after he kills snoke and they fight the throne room guards throne yeah. room, the throne room battle scene yeah which is again um terrible fight choreography yeah but more, was more really less. flashy and quick so you until like it was Anal- like it was okay. really looked at. It wasn't jump cut it as bad as say something like Taken Three. No, where but it, it was takes still... sixty jump cuts for Liam Neeson to jump over a fence. Yeah, but it was close to Transformers. Quick, like I think I think the scenes where they show Ren doing his shit and like just beasting those guys was cool. But there's like when you actually watch stuff with Ray, um, one of the guards it, like stands there with an, his one arm. He's got her like in an arm bar. And he's got another weapon in his hand, the the, the frame before it. The next frame, he, he's got nothing in the other hand. Like, he literally could have stabbed her right there. There's nothing. He could have ended it. It was over. Yeah, there's no... It, but they just took his weapon away, one frame to the one scene from the next. Yeah. Uh, and other stuff where it's, it, it, like, uh, it's, like, prequel... She, she's got that plot armor, dude. Yeah, it's it was very similar to the uh, Battle of... What's the that? Bastards in Game of Thrones? No, or? no, no. The Battle oh. of Fates from oh. Episode One. Oh, okay. Where the Darth Maul fight, where it you watch it in the movie theater, and as a kid, I was like, "Oh my god, this is so amazing!" When you actually go into the fight choreography, half of the swings and moves they do are 
not actually aimed at the people they're trying to hit with the fucking lightsabers. Like, they swing above each other a lot and will swing directly at the other person's you know sword, I will, which is um, not how you fight with swords. I will give them, at least in that, I will give them the fact that they didn't have anything in their hand. Yeah, well, they have, like, they had plastic tubes, so they knew. And they did, like, everything was like a dance. Like, yeah. the fight choreography was set. But the problem is it wasn't done by people who do fight choreography where you're actually trying to make it look like you're trying to kill each other. Yeah. Which yeah. is like Game of Thrones. It's not flashy and pretty. It's fucking brutal, which I think you need a little bit more in Star Wars, which you get out of Kylo Ren. And then with Rey, it was like they didn't. Yeah. Some of it was pretty brutal. It, it's but like almost the, like they were afraid Specifically to. the beginning of that fight, you watch them and half the throne guards swing six feet in the air above Rey and Kylo Ren. It yeah. looks really dumb. It does. But when you watch the whole thing uncut, it's still a flashy fight scene. It's just there's not been much cool, like big over-the-top things in Star Wars yet. Yeah. And Rey fucking doing a backflip. And looking like she's about to slice the wing off of this TIE fighter just fucking looks so cool. I kind of... I, I just I, want something cool in Star Wars, a Jedi to do. Like, yeah. in the books, in the games, fucking Jedi are pulling goddamn Star Destroyers out of the sky. Yeah. They're flinging fucking... Um, they're flinging around ATSTs and... A, or a, yeah, ATST, the chicken walkers. Fucking crushing them. AT. ATATs are the big one. Yeah, the really big the, ones. ATSTs yeah. are the yeah, chicken yeah, leg walkers. Right. But like, like in uh, Force of uh, Unleashed, yeah, this cool shit he can do in that. In the books, like they do, they do amazing stuff, which is what I thought we were gonna get at least one scene of, right? In um, in uh, the Last Jedi, and we got nothing. Yeah, it's but kind of disappointing. This movie, I think we're gonna get that. Uh, the trailer after that, you know, you see. Lando, you see a lot of Finn and right, Poe right. and stuff, which, okay, that's cool. You see the Rebels, and I mean, that's interesting. Kind of important, the whole but... thing with um, Mark Hamill's voiceover is cool. Uh, and then the big, the biggest, most important part of that trailer to me, like yes. I love seeing Lando, and that's, right, of course. that is where I was like, oh my God, they got me. But the very end, Luke says a line that says, uh, we're always here with you. Uh, nobody's ever really gone. Right. I think is what the line is. It might be a little different. Don't quote me. And then you see that they Everybody are. Everybody quote them. <laughs> yeah. You see they're on what looks like a forest planet. And in front of them in like a lake or something is the, the, which I believe is the, um, uh, rubble or the just broken pieces of the fucking death star. Right. Ooh. And you see that. And then you hear, Fucking Emperor Palpatine laughing. Yes. And the trailer fucking ends. And that moment, I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. He did it. J.J. Abrams, that fucking madman's bringing back Palpatine. It's like, I don't remember exactly what we said, but when we talked about how much we hated 8 and we're like, what could J.J. Abrams do or the next director do to bring it back? Yeah. I'm almost positive one of us said he's going to have to bring back Emperor Palpatine. I'm pretty sure (laughs) he's going to have to fucking go there. That is something I'm pretty sure we did say. Not only that, the title like gets me too. When I first saw the title, it was in um, another, it was in a video reaction. Yeah. And it was done by somebody who uh, he's like me, who's always said, no, Ray is going to be a descendant of Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Um, So his title was what the title of the movie is Rise of the Skywalker. Right. I took the title as a joke. Right. Because in no way, shape or form would I ever have expected that to be the title of this fucking movie. Right. And then that's when it when I realized that, no, that's actually what the title of this movie is. I was like, holy shit. Like, does that mean they're going the J.J. Abrams is going so far to retcon that bullshit of, oh, Ray's just a random fucking person. She doesn't really have important parents. Is he retconning that? Is she going to be a Skywalker? I really hope so. Or that whole thing, that whole, that whole idea yeah. was just stupid. See, the other thing I was thinking is since the title is Rise of the Skywalker, you've got the Emperor apparently is back in some way. Um, maybe part of this movie is they're going to try and figure out to try and find a way to bring Luke Skywalker back. And that's what the Rise of the Skywalker is. 
I mean, that would be really nice. I don't um, know. I, I just know that that I love that fucking trailer. Um, the ending after the trailer played at Star Wars Celebration. Right. Um, so I told you about this. So if you didn't see Celebration, what they did after the trailer is an old man, an old an older man steps up on stage. Some of the crowd realizes who this person was and fucking loses their shit. And the old man picks up a mic and goes, play it again. <laughs> Turns out the guy is the actor who played the emperor in uh, the fucking original trilogy. That's so cool. <laughs> Can't remember the guy's name right now, but I uh, was so watching that. I watched the clip of that and it immediately got chills just hearing him say, roll it again. Roll it in again. the, in the emperor voice. Do it. I fucking love. Oh yeah. The emperor is just the ba- most badass yeah. villain in the galaxy. Yeah, no, Emperor Palpatine love, was one of those ones that just, he sent shivers down your fucking yes, spine, man. And that's fucking, the way he needed to be. Snoke is just... He's Snoke just ugly. was nothing. He he's was ugly. Not, like, I wanted him to have more, and then I wonder if J, I wonder if J.J. Abrams kind of like, you motherfucker, I had plans for Snoke, and you just fucking... Okay, well, fuck it. What do we do now? Goddamn Emperor Palpatine's back, bitches. There we go. Sidious is coming back. Fuck yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and <laughs> wind it down there, guys. Do it. Do it. Unlimited power. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. So that was good talk. That was a yeah. good podcast. It's fun. If you guys like to hear our voices, you like to hear us uh, talk about random shit, you know, subscribe, like, sh- comment, share the video, share the podcast, you know, follow us, like on, us Twitter. on Twitter. Facebook. Yeah, like us on Facebook. <laughs> Luke, are, you, are you finally doing the Facebook thing, Luke? I mean, I'm putting the episodes up. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, so for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. Hey guys, have a good day. <laughs> Give us money on Patreon.